Okay, so welcome again, everyone who is here. And now we come to the third session, um, con the continuation from the previous session. But this is a separate topic because we're going to um, go into the detail on the newer version of Mac OS, Keyman 14 for Mac OS. And it will be presented to you by um, Mark Durden, our uh, project lead. And yes. So there you go, Mark. All right, thank you. So this is part of our um, KIMM 14 uh, launch webinar series, and we're doing nine seminars this week. Um, there's a schedule and links back on that page where you entered this webinar, and recordings will be available at the same link, as will the slides. So you'll be able to click links and things in the slides. Uh, after the webinar is finished. So this is the Keyman for Mac OS deep dive webinar, and I've got here, it will run for 20 minutes. It probably won't run much longer than that, but you never know if we get all excited about some of the low level stuff, we could take a full half hour. I will make sure I leave some time for some questions at the end of the webinar as well. So I uh, Keyman for, for, for Mac OS, Keyman for macOS is one of the newest Keyman products we have. So it's not quite as mature perhaps as some of the other products. Uh, we've still been working to try and integrate it more with the existing Keyman uh, projects, so Keyman for Windows and Keyman for Android and iOS and try and make it more consistent. As part of that, of course, we have uh, introduced the simpler and smoother keyboard search, which we've done on all platforms. And we've added support for European layouts in the on-screen keyboard. And I'll talk a bit more about what that means shortly. We've made a number of bug fixes and compatibility improvements, particularly allowing us to control application integration modes, which allows us to control the compatibility for various applications, especially older apps. And because we are trying to keep on top of errors and things, we've got consolidated crash reporting through to sentry.keyman.com, which is our error reporting site. So that's actually not a public site, um, but we do, can share selected reports on that. So we now in Keyman 14 have redesigned our keyboard search so that it's consistent across all applications. Now Keyman for Mac, uh, surprisingly enough, uh, was better in this respect in that it used the same search as the website, even in Keyman 13. However, we've still rewritten that keyboard search on the website, so we get all the benefits of that in Keyman 14 as well. So we can now use a single Google-like search for a keyboard or a language name, a script, a writing system or a country, or a dialect name and alternate names of languages. And it will return a single list of all of the keyboards that it finds that match that search term. And it's gonna make the more popular ones and the more relevant ones uh, bubble to the top of the list. This means that typically the keyboard you're looking for will be the first or second one on the list rather than the 12th or 15th. It also means that you'll have fewer steps to get to the install link because you're not having to drill down through a, a search tree. We also have a QR code for simple sharing across devices. So if you find a keyboard on your Mac and you want to use that on your iPhone, you can just pull out your iPhone and snap a shot of the QR code and it will load the keyboard there on your iPhone. Now I will attempt to give a, a quick walkthrough of what that looks like in Keyman for Mac. Uh, I haven't actually tried this before, so let's see how that goes. If I just pull that across there. Yep, that, that works, but I do not have my menu right now. So give me a second here. What I might have to do is exit the, the full screen. So we can see up here, we switch to Keyman. And now we can go to Keyman configuration. And I'm going to pull that across to the right screen here. So that's visible to everyone, I hope. 
we have a list of installed keyboards here. I'm going to download another one. Now we can see here it's actually returning, it's actually a web page and we can just type in, uh, let's just type, select an English keyboard first or it's a bit difficult to type the word I'm wanting for here and we'll go Malay alum and you can see that we've come up with a list of popular keyboards for Malay alum. So I'm going to go with the Moz, I don't, not sure how to pronounce that I'm afraid, but Mozzie Malay alum and we can see then we can click install keyboard. Before we do that, we can scroll down and have a quick look. It's got some details about how the, who created the keyboard and uh, how it works. If we scroll down, we can see that it works on all of our platforms, all our supported platforms. And you can see a link here to the documentation for the keyboard on our website. Another link here to the source of the keyboard. So if you want to change it, you can and see how many people have downloaded it in the last month, roughly. And you can see other related keyboards, which are all old versions of this keyboard in this case, and the list of languages that this keyboard works with, which in this case is just the one, Alayla. So if I go install keyboard here, it's gonna download the keyboard and done. Now the keyboard is installed. We've got information about it again. We've got a readme with more information about the keyboard in, not in English in this case, so I can't read it, but um, maybe there's somebody here who can. And now you can see the keyboard is right there. I can also get that same information back here by clicking a question mark and it's going to give me more, more documentation as, as well. All right, let's go back to that presentation. So if you go through the exact same process in the website, it will actually uh, prompt you to install Keyman for Mac first, and then uh, allow you to install the keyboard from the website through a, a single click. So we can't quite do the same level of integration as we do on some other platforms, but it's um, just a two-step process. With the on-screen keyboard, what we've done in version 14 is only a very small change. Uh, we've added the extra key, we sometimes call it the 100 second key because you have a 101 key keyboard for US and a 102 key keyboard for Europe. So this extra key here um, is used on European keyboards and uh, if you didn't have it, you couldn't actually click it with the on-screen keyboard, which is a little bit awkward. Now, the European keyboard also changes the um, position of the this key here, moves it up here, changes the size of the backspace and the shape of the enter key. We don't do that yet, but all the keys are accessible. So um, there's a stylistic issue, but not a usability issue really here. We've made a number of other bug fixes and improvements. Uh, I think I mentioned in my overview uh, webinar that we don't currently have a developer looking after Keyman for Mac OS. So we are really doing mostly maintenance. So the work we've done is trying to um, address the most serious problems. Uh, for instance, the configuration dialog would open another copy um, of it. So you'd end up with two configuration dialogs visible when you were adding a new keyboard. You could sometimes get keyboards listed twice in your list and not be able to remove them. Um, the help now works even if you're not online. And when you use the arrow keys in a document, it correctly clears the keystroke context cache, which just means that you won't accidentally get the wrong output when you start typing in a new part of your document. I'm gonna spend a little bit of time now talking about the application compatibility list. This is uh, a more uh, technical topic, but it's fairly important if you are working with legacy apps, older apps on, on Mac OS. In a future version, we hope to make this more of a user interface, but for now, at least we're giving access through the terminal. So Keyman operates in two modes. It operates in a context-aware mode with modern apps like all of the Apple apps 
and uh, most of the new apps like Microsoft Word and things like that that have been kept up to date and operates in a legacy mode for older apps. So the context aware apps let Keyman work directly with the text, which means it can change each character as it needs um, as you type. But the legacy apps, they require Keyman to actually emulate the text changes by pressing a, sending a backspace event or um, emitting a specific key code and things like that. So they work very differently and the legacy apps just don't work properly in context aware mode. Keyman 13 had a hard coded list of apps that we were aware of that needed to work in legacy mode, but we kept getting requests to add other apps to that list. So for version 14, we've added a user preference for these legacy apps. So there's a user preferences are controlled in macOS with the defaults command. So if we run this command, the defaults read keyman.inputmethod.keyman came legacy apps, we'll get a list of those. And I'm just going to try and, and, and do that now with a terminal. Let's, let's get a nice clear terminal because that's a bit too messy. Can I zoom that in? Bigger. All right, so not sure how visible that is to people, but we'll, we'll give it a go. Defaults, read, I can't type, but that's okay. Keyman.inputmethod.keyman came legacy apps. And we can see we've got a list of four apps there, which um, I've added in, which uh, I'm aware that do not work properly with the uh, context aware mode. So we'll go to the next slide. So the way we can add an app to the, uh, the list is to, first of all, we'll locate the app's full name in Finder. Now I can see there, we already have com.microsoft.word there. So let's use a different app instead. So I'm gonna to go to Finder and then go to Applications. Let's, why don't we do Skype? I have no idea, it may be fine, but it doesn't matter for the purposes of this demonstration. So what we can do is we can, let's just see if we can get this back here. We can type in this command, osa script dash e id of app Skype. And it's going to list, ah, it's called com.skype.skype. Then I can say defaults write keyman.inputmethod.keyman km legacy apps dash array dash add. Don't you love computers? Aren't they awesome? <laughs> Com.skype.skype. And everyone thought that Mac OS meant you didn't have to use the command line. And now Keyman will work in legacy mode with Skype. So if I go and look at my list again, I can see that I've got Skype in there as well. So hopefully that little walkthrough will be helpful if you ever have to add an app to your legacy list and you'll know you have to do it if when you start typing things just don't work properly. Now that's actually all I have right now for Mac OS. We're hoping to do more work on Command for Mac in future versions. We particularly need to get the localization in, which is the Mac OS is the one platform which we didn't have the resources to do the full internationalization. Um, and we hope to have a Mac OS developer join our team in the next few months. We do have some time for questions, if anyone has any questions. If there are no questions, um, then you are free to leave early. <laughs> and um, I'll say thank you very much for coming along. And uh, we'll have our next presentation is uh, tomorrow morning, my time, 6 a.m. my time, which is about um, just over nine hours from now. And that's Keyman for Windows. And then we have the rest of the remaining webinars will be 
online through uh, the timetables online through the uh, same website, the webinar website that you came here with.